What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're gonna be looking at a little title called Exodemic. But it's a little title, but I think it's like big on ideas. Like this is one of those games that initially I did not like it. Like not one tiny little bit. I was playing it and I was like, this feels like a phone game, I don't like it. Uh, but like as I played it more and more, so I've got a couple of hours under my belt now, like the genius of this game really kind of tends to pop. And so it took a little while for this one to grow on me, but once it grew on me, I was like, okay, I can see the appeal. Uh, the basic premise of Exodemic is you are a planetary defense fighter, and you can only orbit planets, and there are aliens coming to infect your planet with a virus, and you've got to fight them off. Uh, there's a little bit of a feeling of kind of like vampire survivors in here, although not much. Uh, this game very much stands on its own two feet, and I think this is one of those games that's very, very unique and hard to describe or bounce off of other titles. Just because I don't think I've ever quite played anything like it before. It's a very, very simple game. It only has three buttons. I apologize, but either my commentary or my gameplay is going to suffer today because this game is highly based on reaction times and like really paying attention and really timing your shots because you've kind of got limited ammo while you're defending the planets and it takes a long time to recharge. Uh, but you can get some hilariously overpowered builds in this game as you get further and further on in. So we're going to spend about 25 minutes with the game today, see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this video, you did indeed want to get the game for yourself, I have a link for you down below in the description alongside my Discord and my Twitch stream, just in case you wanted to swing on through. Let's go ahead and play. Uh, so I've got two ships unlocked right now. I don't actually know how many ships there are. It looks like there's three. Uh, and so anyways, what are you looking at right here? You've got the synopsis of the ship that you're choosing. Uh, so basically, every ship has mod slots, and the mod slots, you can think about those basically the same way as you would think about, you know, your your eight slots that you get in, like, Vampire Survivors or whatever. Uh, so you get two ship upgrades, you get two weapon upgrades, and you get two boost upgrades. It's got three HP. The HP really doesn't matter until the late game a lot of the time when the enemy starts shooting back at you. Uh, in the early game, it's very, very easy to ignore the HP, but later on, they're going to be firing back. And then this is the amount of ammo you have. This is your energy tank. It goes down by, like, X amount every time you fire a bullet while you're orbiting a planet. At the moment, I have two ships unlocked. I have the Spartan, which is the default ship, and I have the Ghost, which is the next ship after you beat the game on easy. I did beat the game on easy on my first try, and I almost beat the game on normal on my first try. Uh, but normal's taking me a little bit longer. I keep getting to, like, the five-yard line and then fumbling. We'll play on normal here today. We'll go with the Spartan ship, since that's probably what most people are going to pick the first time around. The game does have a hard mode uh, that you need to unlock by beating normal first. But let's dive on in, and I'll do my best to kind of explain the controls to you. Actually, I'll do it right here, because once we're in the game, this game is very time-sensitive. You need to be operating quickly, or you're going to accumulate damage to your systems, and you're going to lose. Uh, basically, there's only a couple buttons for this game. There's W, which makes you boost forward on the planet's orbit. Uh, you have Q, which makes you fire your gun towards the planet that you are orbiting. And that kind of trigonometric trajectory is going to be really, really important. Like, learning to feel that out so that you can consistently hit enemies from, like, low orbit, medium orbit orbit, high orbit is going to be very, very important. And then there's space bar, which allows you to leap from the orbit and slingshot from one planet to another planet. That's right, we're defending entire systems, so there's multiple planets of varying sizes that are interconnected by warp slingshots, and you've got to be able to time those very well as you play along too. And the strategy of this game is not readily important until you've got like an hour or two under your belt. And then you start to realize like the point at which you slingshot and where you jump and how you fire is very, very, very important. So here's our first wave. They've spawned around this planet right here. I'm gonna go ahead and destroy them. There we go. We can jump over this planet too. I'm gonna kinda like fire some bullets in here. We'll go ahead and take that guy out and we'll take that guy out. The things we're picking up right now are coins. Uh, the coins are gonna allow us to buy upgrades. And that's it. That's literally a level of this game. A very, very easy level of this game, but a level of this game. Now, how do you win? Uh, you win by making it to the last fight on this map. You gotta make it all the way down and around. What does the legend on this map mean? Well, let me run you through it here. Greens are fights. Now, if you travel along any path that is green, it's going to increase your infection track because as I said, the aliens are attempting to infect us all with some kind of weird booty plague virus. Uh, they're trying to give everybody weeping booty holes and we just, we can't accept that. There are not enough, there, there's just not enough like plastic seat covers in the known galaxy for us to cover that kind of liability. And so anyways, in the interest of our upholstery, we're trying to stop them. And so what that means is anytime you beeline straight for a fight, 
it doesn't cost you anything. The infection track does not go up. However, anytime you stop to upgrade your ship and get new things, uh, the track does indeed go upwards very, very rapidly. And so that's where you've got to kind of manage the risk reward of the game. Like, do I stop off early a lot and grab a lot of upgrades, hoping that that's going to help out as I get further on into the game? Like, do I, you know, just take all the fights I possibly can, stack up a ton of gear, and then just hope that the enemies don't snowball on me too fast before I can upgrade all that gear? You know, like, it's it's one of those things where there definitely is kind of a meta game to this title. Uh, there is mouse control inside of this menu. And so you just click on the node that you want to go to. Over here, you can see our inventory. We've got our ship slots, our weapon slots, and we've got our dash slots. We've also got free slots right here. These don't actually go active, uh, but they're just things you're storing in your inventory for later or you're swapping out just in case there's a different kind of threat that the game has decided to prioritize. This bottom spot right here basically just chucks it out of the airlock. That's you getting rid of stuff just in case you're not at a store and you can't sell it. Uh, other things on the map, these are ship upgrades. This right here is a scrapper, I think. You give him two of your loots and he'll basically give you a randomized loot of higher quality. Uh, this is a store right here. This is going to be a weapon upgrade. This is a dash upgrade. This is a research facility. Uh, where you can take one of your equipments and you can split it into two of the equipment. Uh, so basically, if I gave him a rocket launcher, he would give me two rocket launchers back. Uh, these right here are upgrades. And so these allow you to take a gear. This game kind of has like uh, Diablo style or like World of Warcraft style gear tiers. So there's white, there's green, there's blue, there's purple, there's legendary. And they all do different things. And I'll tell you what, the legendary ones are super rad. They are like home wreckers and then this right here is a pill it allows you to lower your infection track let's go ahead and take the next fight uh, this is a rough track we don't have a lot of upgrades and so I'm a little bit worried about how this is gonna work out for us I'd like to pick up some weapon upgrades a little bit sooner but it just doesn't seem to be oh there was two enemies right there I didn't realize okay they were stacked up on each other we do have fights over here we're gonna go BAM 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 and we're gonna knock them out we're going to dash on in. I got a little bit froggy right there with my gunfire, unfortunately. We're going to jump over to here, and I'm going to try to eliminate this issue first. I'm going to skip out on that money over there. Oh, I just wasted a lot of ammo. We may take some damage right here. Okay, we made it. We made it. We're all right. Uh, basically, if the enemies stay on the grid for too long, they do like this little fart explosion that's just like, Purr, and then like you get extra infection on all the planets that they farted on. I don't have a lot of money right now. But I do think picking up some upgrades that will sort of define the rest of our run are a really good idea. I think I'll probably wait till I'm over here. So we'll do these three fights. We'll grab ship upgrades right there. We'll take our one infection. We'll come down this way. We'll take a double infection to get another ship upgrade and to get a weapon upgrade. I will probably take this track right here. And then from there, we'll just keep it straight and narrow depending on what we get. I think that's the path that I'm looking at at the moment. Uh, but the game does get a lot, lot harder. And you are going to need, like, supplementary equipment and whatnot if you want to make this thing happen. All right, let's go ahead and we'll go over to here. I needed to fire, like, two right there. We're going to get an infection right here. Yep, there it is. There's our first infection, unfortunately. Ah, I missed the shot. No! No! Okay, well, I just totally screwed the pooch right there. Got that guy right when he came out of the warp jump. We're gonna... Oh, my God, there's so many of you. Oh, I'm out of ammo. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. Okay. Every time you hear that boop, 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 uh, that means that they're about to infect the planet, in case you were wondering. All right, so we'll drop these guys over here. I'm so glad that I practiced before I did this episode, man. This is going so much more smoothly than my first run did. It really took me a long time to figure out sort of the orbital path to get the bullet to hit where I want it to hit. And until I made that connection, this game was very, very mean and cruel to me. It was very, very difficult. Now, let's see here. So we got that guy right there. We got that guy right there. That actually hit, so I'm actually pretty happy about that. There we go. We've knocked them out. We've got a whole bunch of shooting to do over here. I'm going to teleport down this way. I am missing out on a lot of the Mun Muns right now that we would normally be rewarded with on this play. Uh, I got a slingshot over to here, though. Ooh, I got him from across the planet. Nice. I actually, that was just kind of a desperate shot. I didn't expect it to impact. All right, there we go. We've got kind of like a medium orbit going right here. Oh, okay. I whiffed that one. We're probably... 
Nope, we're not going to get infected. Nice. I thought we were going to take an infection right there, but we didn't. Uh, this is our first ship upgrade. Let's go ahead and we will get off the path and we'll see what we've got here. So we have, we have a couple of options here. And none of them are like, they're not like run defining. We can get increased engines. Increased engines allow you to make the orbit around the planet a lot faster so that you can swap very, very quickly in between planets. The downside to that is it makes it much harder to aim. On some of my runs, I have taken the improved engines, and it's been kind of hit or miss. Like, I can adapt to situations much more rapidly, but I find that it throws off my muscle memory. We can get another dash charge, which is not bad. Uh, we can also get frost orbit, which is going to allow us to freeze the planet for one second whenever we jump into a system, thus buying us a little bit more time to deal with the threats that are there and get them to stop shooting. The battery pack is very tempting, but it's also very expensive. And we're going back to the grid in just a second to go to a shop and also to go to a weapon upgrade. And I plan on spending very, very heavily when I get to the weapon upgrades because the weapon upgrades tend to be the things that matter. If you wanted to know and have some idea of the variety of weapons there are in this game. Oh, he almost got me. Okay, they're shooting back already. Can't say that I love being shot back at, but we are getting shot back at right now. We're going to jump to this planet right here. I'm going to try to knock. Oh, no, dude. We got the Wiggly Boys. I can never hit the Wiggly Boys. Basically, my strategy with the Wiggly Boys is just to, like, spam bullets when I go by them. Uh, it's not a great strategy. I'm not going to pretend like it's a strategy that really pays off for me. But I will say... Wow. I missed all of it, huh? Yeah, I get the feeling we're probably taking some infection here. There we go. Okay, I got him right there. Let's go ahead and get on out to here. Oh, he moved right as I was going to fire the bullet. Ah. Damn it. Please die. Okay. We spamming when I go by. That's it. We're spamming. I don't mean to be overly aggressive with my firearms. Ooh, it's very, very generous that they gave us like a solid jump right there that we could use. Uh, don't let him infect us any further. Our infection is already kind of high for this phase of the game, and I would rather it not be. We're going to slip on over into here, see what we can grab. Okay. Well, we cleared we, we cleared some of them out, and then we hit those two over there, so that's good. We've got a little bit more cash coming in. Got two of them right there. Got him. Ooh, just kind of wasted my entire salvo right there, which is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, we've also got stealth fighters that we have to deal with. And he snuck right in between all my shots. I hate it. There we go. I managed to blind fire him out. I probably shouldn't have fired that shot right there. That was probably not what a good player would do. Well, they got a little bit of infection off on us. In, in my opinion, a little unfortunate. But we did make a little bit of money right here. Oh, we got some more Wiggly Boys, too. All right, they're going to get another infection on us. There we go. Wiggly Boys down. My favorite way to deal with the Wiggly Boys, and I got totally off my train of thought right there. If you're wondering what kind of cool weapons there are in this game, my favorite is the Missile Packs. Uh, the Missile Packs make it so that, like, every X amount of times you fire your gun, a guided missile gets fired that just targets something somewhere in the galaxy. Uh, I had another one that was a legendary dash that when you dashed on your orbit, it would flick out flames that would cover the entire galaxy and wipe out things on other planets uh, in the trajectory of basically the way that the rear of your ship would have drifted on out. Uh, it was very, very tactile, and it was very interesting kind of figuring out how to use that properly. Uh, I've got bullets that grow and get bigger the further across the galaxy they get until they're like planet size and just hit everything in a direction. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of really, really cool equipments in this game that you can play around with. Let's go ahead and get some upgrades. We are going to take a little bit of poisoning here. Uh, we could pick up a generator at the moment. I don't think that's a terrible idea. That'll make our that'll make our energy bank a lot bigger so that we can fire a lot more bullets. Yeah, I think I will take that. So there's a generator upgrade, and as you can see, the meter actually resizes uh, to fit. That's a really, really unfortunate tooltip, isn't it? That, that's a really... That's, that's one of those pieces of art that somebody... <laughs> Somebody had had to look at that and be like, that, do that doesn't, I mean, that doesn't, I mean, it, it might be a generator, but the only thing it's going to produce is thrust. Anyways, <laughs> let's get going. I got to save some money. I got to save some money to buy weapons. 
Oh no, they have the missile pack, but it but it costs a hundo and I don't have a hundo. I'm gonna have to sell my frost orbit. I'm gonna do it just so that I can get blue level missile packs. Every three times I fire my gun, I get a free missile. All right, this is the good stuff right here. This is where it starts to get interesting. Uh, we don't really have any money, so the only time I think I'm going to diverge to pick up another weapon is maybe over here. I mean, picking up a dash upgrade would not be a terrible idea either. But man, I'm a little bit conflicted right now. I'm not like super conflicted, but... Oh, it fired my, it fired my missile at the wrong thing. All right, we'll go over here. There we go. Missiles away right there. Fire a missile at him. Good. I can fire a lot more bullets now, which is good, because for this build, you really do want... Oh, I got shot by a laser. Yeah, he was using a death ray. Okay. Yeah, just shoot him with a missile. I'll just spend a whole bunch of ammo to get it done. There we go. Clear the planet over here. And as you can see, the missiles make a big, big difference. Uh, by far, the missiles are my favorite piece of equipment. Uh, I don't know. There we go. We'll wipe him out. We'll see if we can fire a missile over there. There we go. Perfect. So now the clearing is going a little bit better. And as you can see, like, the game is very tense and it's very stressful up until you pick up those upgrades that matter. And that's one of the things that I really like about this game is that the upgrades have weight. They have consequence. Like, when you pick up a weapon upgrade, it makes you far more efficient than you were previously. There we go. We'll go ahead and fire that on out. It's unfortunate these guys are all the way over here, though. I wish that they were not. We'll pick up all the monies. We're just going to fire wildly into the center of this blob. And whatever happens, happens. Perfect. We're going to want to put a little bit of DPS over here. I'm going to try and get over here by the time everything recharges. There we go. Perfect. If I can pick up another missile pack, dude... Uh, we are... Ooh, did I already clear that planet? Nice. Hell yeah. Oh, I warped into a bullet. I I had such a good run going. I dashed right there, but I think my dash was already used up from the top right quadrant. And so anyways, this is a very, very entertaining game. I like it a lot. It, it, took, a, it took a minute for me to really appreciate the nuance and actually how tight and tuned and well-designed this game is. But once it kind of like clicked into place... Uh, I, I realized that what the developer had made here is actually something quite special. Uh, with this game, they've managed to marry the idea of simplicity and complexity into kind of like this very, very polished, very simple, like really easy to pick up, but really hard to learn type of game uh, that's got like a lot of moving parts that by and large are almost entirely tactile. Like the players just got to learn... Uh, where to fire their bullets, for example. Like, and if you never pick up that particular skill of where to fire your bullet in the orbit, uh, you're not going to get too much further. And then there's the metagame progress of, like, understanding all the upgrades and which ones are the best and which ones you want in order to get further on into the game on higher difficulties. And, and like, you can really get to an absurd level of OP shipbuilding here. Like, I've had legendary missile packs that just make it so that every shot I'm firing like a missile you know what I mean and like that kind of stuff is very very fun to play around with we're gonna take an infection right here there's really nothing I can do about that I missed all my opening shots and I really needed all these guys to die on the opening salvo I took a risky shot right there yeah I had to man I didn't want to do that sometimes their bullets line up just perfectly with like how your orbit is going and you just you got to use a dash but in using the dash you miss out on an opportunity to kind of like land hits basically I hate those little wiggling guys dude I hate them so much these little wiggling guys are like the bane of my existence I can never hit them I don't know what's wrong with me the little wiggling guys they just mess with something inside of my brain and make me completely and totally ineffective as a player I lose more infection to those little wiggling guys than any other enemy in this game. But as I was saying, uh, this is a very tight, very, very polished, very simple, yet at the same time, interestingly complex game uh, that I think a lot of people are going to get really, really addicted to. And the unfortunate reality of the situation is that the game has not garnered a lot of praise uh, for what has been created right here. Like, I feel like the gaming community at large has really, really failed to recognize uh, the genius that exists in simplicity with this game. 
And like, it's very, very easy to hand wave this game off just like I did as kind of like a mobile game diversion, but it's actually very, very, very well designed and kind of like intricately thought out. And it allows the player to become overpowered sometimes and have super simple runs where there's no problems. And there's other runs where you just can't put the things together that you need and you feel like you're fighting this desperate battle against invaders that you just can't win. And it gets that like, you know, feeling to it. Uh, it it's a cool game in that respect. Uh, I think I am going to buy the battery bank upgrade just having more there's there's no there's no replacement for just the simple joy of having more bullets you know what i mean uh we've got a base level rocket pack right here we can also get piercing shots i'm gonna take the base level rocket launcher maybe we'll be able to upgrade it a little bit later I'm gonna make my projectiles a little bit faster because that also gives me the additive benefit of making my generator charge up faster, which means in turn I can spam more bullets, which means in turn I can get more heat-seeking missiles that make my job easy. So, you know. Uh, I do think the game could use a little bit more equipment. Uh, there are no, like, metagame unlocks in this game whatsoever. It is a pure roguelike in every respect of the word. Maybe not like a classic roguelike, I guess, in the way that people would think about it. Something like Caves of Cud or whatever. But it is a game that is like permadeath and you play till you die. I missed my rotation right there. I'm just going to get him with a missile. Oh, cool. I lucked out and one of my bullets hit this little turd over here. Just fire a missile at him real quick. We'll just kind of vent everything. There we go. Very nice. Let me get my mun muns. Let me get my cash. Let me get my strelingas. Now we're gonna take this down over to here, and then we'll keep on going. I do think there could the, the game could definitely use I think a, a few more pieces of gear. The ones that they have in the game, in my opinion, are really, really, really fun. But you know, more never hurts. Uh, we're gonna try and sort of zip line our way. Ah, he got the infection off. We had, we had a tough grid right there that was very, very split up. Uh, I need to get back around in orbit, and I need to do it, like, soon rather than later. There we go, there we go, there we go. Recharge, recharge, recharge. All right, give me a nice little planet clear right there. Give me a nice little planet clear right there. I don't know if I got them all. I think I did. All right, there we go. Final waves up. I don't have a lot of energy to make this happen, but, oh, I got to get around this orbit faster. There we go, perfect. All right, we made it out of there. Dude, the, the guided missiles are just such a godsend when it comes to like pushing a run through. We've got a little bit more money stacked up, but we're not quite ready to go yet. Let's go ahead and dive on in. Uh, I found that the sound effects for this game are very, very well selected. Uh, they are very 8-bit, and yet at the same time, things that matter, like the coins sounding good when you pick them up, do indeed sound good. I think that the soundtrack is also well selected. Uh, it's very intense, and it definitely makes you feel like you are under the eight ball trying to solve a problem on a limited time scale. Like, it can definitely, in my opinion, ratchet up the tension a little bit. There we go. Uh, I gotta get back around. We gotta clear this planet since it's the farthest guy. And then over here, we gotta clear them. And then, oop, mess that up. We'll just clean up my problems with a missile. There's nothing, uh, there's nothing that a missile can't solve, all right? If you've got a problem, add more missiles, and eventually that problem will go away. This is a big wide orbit that we've got in the middle right here. And I very much wish that we did not have this big wide orbit. I'm fishing for a missile right now. Oh, never mind. I got him right there. Oh, yeah, that, that long, long orbit right there that we started on just made that a lot more difficult than it needed to be. All right, let's get some missiles out. We'll let the generator recharge. Let's see if maybe I can do something about these over here. We'll try to get to center field out here. Yeah, we're going to take a little bit of damage here, I think. Just ain't no way around it. All right. Oh, almost, almost ate a gunshot right there. That probably would have been unpleasant and painful. I just need a missile to go off. That's pretty much it. There we go. And so as you can tell, the build that I'm working on right now is very much like a, a spam bullets build uh, that's going to get you a lot of kills just through missile fire. That's it. Like, I'm not even trying to aim anymore. What I've done is I've pushed up my energy tank to the point and my regeneration to the point where I can just spam the button when I want to and be rewarded for it. And so that's kind of what I'm doing. 
we are going to want to get to upgrade nodes pretty soon. There's one of each upgrade right here, and I'm kind of wondering if I could fish for something beautiful over there. I do think we're going to have to go for the pill in order to cure our infection a little bit. But yeah, Exodemic. This game is absolutely fantastic. I can't speak highly enough of it. Uh, and I've got like a, a strange feeling that this is going to be one of those games that like people for whatever reason just kind of skip over, you know, like, like it's definitely got that tone of game, but I promise like you give it, you give it a try. And if you're into kind of novel, interesting little roguelike titles like this, you'll probably have a good time with it. I don't think I've ever quite seen anything like it. Like, I think this game stands on its own, much in the same way that FTL did when it came out, uh, much in the way that Binding of Isaac did when it first came out. Like, this is one of those games that it's playing with fun ideas, very, very fun ideas, and it manages to do that without being like a turn-your-brain-off game either, which is very, very pleasing. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were checking out a title called Exodemic, which I think is absolutely fantastic. I don't really have any complaints about it. That's about all I have to say. I think the game is really, really, really good. And I think there's something very elegant about making a game like this that is incredibly simple, yet at the same time is just super, super addictive. And you just can't seem to kind of pry your way... Uh, you can't seem to pry yourself away from the game and do anything else, even though it's literally a game about orbiting planets and pushing two buttons. You know what I mean? Like, if you put that on paper, I have made a game about orbiting a planet and pushing three buttons most people be like, that doesn't sound that compelling. It just goes to show it is all about presentation. Ooh, we got the magic dash over here. Uh, this does AOE damage to anything that's near the track we're orbiting. When we dash, it basically puts like a big Kamehameha wave in front of our ship. And then we can make our dash longer too. Oof. Yeah, that's got synergy. Like, I've got to go for it. Any, like, the other suggestion that I might have for the game is I'd really like to see an endless mode. And in that endless mode, it would be really, really cool if you could, like, build defenses on the planets and stuff like that. I know that probably goes against the intent of the game, but, like, there's, like, this little part of me that always just wants to, like, build and defend, and I just can't help it. I just, I want to. It makes me happy. And so, anyways, that was my first thought that came to mind is, like, what if the game had, like, a push pause... And like every now and again, in exchange for money, you could push pause and put like SAM sites and stuff on the planets that would like help out with enemies. And then in the endless mode, you could like ratchet it up to just absolutely absurd amounts of enemies uh, jumping in from like outer systems and stuff, dude. Oof, that'd be amazing. As you can see, whenever I dash now, it does like a little saw blade thing. Uh, that swish swish. Oh, walked right into that one. Took a triple triple dip hit right there, which was very, very painful, and I hated it. But we survived another one. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were checking out a game called Exodemic. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you all later. Thank you for hanging out with me. I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Let me know what you think about the game down below. I think it's pretty cool, but you know, not everybody likes everything. And so anyways, I will see you all next time. Thanks for hanging out.